we'll see the new ad in a moment, more of it. Gil, first talk about this campaign. You are saying that the issues with the government budget is not spending, but revenue. Why do you think it's revenue? Well, there's a serious problem with the Alberta government's finances. On one hand, we're the richest province by almost any def definition, uh, but at the same time, we have a government that continuing, continues to talk the language of austerity. Uh, when we look at where the problem really is, though we see it's not a spending problem, it's a revenue problem. We're spending about the same on public services when you adjust for inflation and population growth as we were 20 years ago. The real problem is that we've essentially blown a hole in our revenue base that we need to fund public services like education and health care by what I would describe as 20 years of irresponsible tax and royalty giveaways. This is why we have a deficit. This is why we're, we've got a rich province that says it can't afford services. And this is the conversation which we really think Albertans should be having in advance of the next provincial election. Scott, is the problem money in or money out? Well, Gil's absolutely right uh, that, uh, that, that our spending on a, on a per person adjusted for inflation basis is the same as it was 20, 25 years ago. But let's think back to 20, 25 years ago under the Getty government, we were running massive deficits. So uh, today we are running. Problem at the time well, today we're running <laughs> massive deficits. So I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. When when you spend to the same level that you did back in the Getty government, you're going to run deficits, and that's why we're running deficits. We have an average revenue stream as, as, as compared to other provinces. We're not the, we're not on the low end. We're not on the high end. We have about a very average revenue stream. But when but it comes we have to spending, all that oil. sure. But when it comes to but spending, it though, be we're but when it comes to revenue, though, uh, we're we're average. But when it comes to spending, we're at the top of the list. So See, when, I disagree when you're, with that. you're fundamentally wrong on that. No, I'm point. not. No, yeah. you, you, when you talk oh, about no, when you talk about let's as a let Frank GDP. weigh in. Frank, <laughs> who's this right? Is, it, no, it, this is a spending problem. This is not a revenue problem. This, this government is addicted to spending. If you look at the pattern all, through all of these oil cycles, the ups and downs, every time oil and gas go up, revenue goes up, and spending ramps up in touch with it, and then. When the bus comes, and it always comes, they leave spending up there, and they run these deficits, and then they sit around, and they wait for the next boom to sort of lift them into another balanced budget, and then they don't cut spending, and then we go down again, and we run another deficit. Well, and that's exactly what yeah. we're doing right now, is we're running it everywhere. We're waiting for revenue to catch up with us, instead of doing the right thing, and the right thing is to cut spending. So the debate continues. What's new is a video that will reach the internet Monday. We've got it tonight. You'll see this on a better way, Alberta.ca, and here right now. Charging me next to nothing in taxes and royalties to dig your oil really helped out. And your province's government's underfunding of health care and education, so I could make even more millions. <laughs> thank you, my dear, <laughs> for the ice cream. And thank you, Alberta, for everything else. Wow. <laughs> Scott, what do you think? Uh, I mean, it's it's a good ad. It's an amusing ad. Um, amusing yeah, it, or real? Well, I, amusing. I think it's amusing. I mean, I think that uh, the the idea that uh, that that the benefits that we've had here with our good economy, the low taxes, uh, the current royalty regime we have, the, the idea that it's only benefiting some guy with gold bars on his desk is, is hilarious. Country. I mean, it's hilarious. I mean, I think that we're the envy of of almost every other province. I think a lot of Gill's supporters, a lot of his workers, uh, have had very good paying jobs and and have had very low unemployment rates in this province due to the to the low tax regime that we've had in this province and the, and the encouragement we've, we've given businesses to uh, set up here. So well, let's get, you know, let's it's, get it's very some, good. With, with all due respect, Scott, let's get something straight. The reason that our economy has grown is not because our, of our low tax rates or our royalty rates. It's because we have oil. So uh, oil companies are lining up to exploit the resource that the Alberta public owns. And it's because of the oil that here, it's not because of the low but tax rates. But how would you have and, exploited and, but, it then? But, I don't but, understand. But, listen, Frank, want. listen, Frank. First, I got to take a quick take issue with something that you said that during economic wait, wait, boom wait times in Alberta, no, no the, the, during economic boom times you wait said that minute, spending you're not rounds running up the show here <laughs> yeah Mr. Frank, <laughs> Frank look Frank listen I you said you something that needs first. it needs no you actually didn't finish asking a question because okay. I tried to ask you Frank one. let <laughs> Frank go ahead for one moment Look, I don't understand from your perspective. What do you want us to do? You want us to leave the oil in the ground, or no, do you want the government all. to run it? What What are oil companies doing that's wrong right now? I don't well, understand listen, that. Frank, they're the taking the resource out of the ground. They're meeting a demand in the world, and they're selling the oil. What's wrong with that? We're the, benefiting from it as Albertans. We've got the jobs, as Scott said. Frank, Frank, the, the problem is not development of our resources. It's a question of what happens to the wealth that's generated as a result of the development of those resources, and what we've seen. 
over the last 20 years is a dramatic expansion of Alberta's economic pie, which is good news for everyone, but a smaller sure. and smaller share of that pie is being made available to fund the public services that Albertans value and frankly which we need as a foundation to build a more prosperous future. And, and this is one of, the, one of the big questions that I think people need to be asking, especially when we're talking about the development of a resource that we own collectively. Where is the wealth going? Right now, if you look over the last 20 years, almost all of the wealth that was created in this province, it hasn't gone to, gone to public service because oh, by, by, by... $10 billion okay. this year. Well, $10 listen, billion you said yourself that on a per-person basis, $10 adjusted billion. for inflation, we're spending exactly the yeah. same Bill, number let's let's pick up 20 years ago. We sure are. We sure are. The same one when we were running massive deficits under Getty. We're getting $10 billion this year in, in royalty revenue. It's averaged about $9.5 billion. A lot of other provinces don't have that, and they do have natural resources. Quebec has shale gas they won't touch. Saskatchewan, for many years, had have oil sands, have oil that they wouldn't mm. touch. I mean, the policies that you're suggesting are the same that the Saskatchewan government implemented through the 1990s, and people moved to Alberta because of that. Okay, well, let's find anymore. out a little bit more uh, as well what Frank has to say in a moment. Can How would yes. raising taxes and royalties really impact Alberta's energy sector? Well, Could we tick it up a little bit? Would our economic engine key, die? One moment, Frank. Here. We can ask what viewers oh. think. You tell us, are Albertans getting their share of resource riches? Follow the contact links on albertaprimetime.com and we're back with our panel, including Frank, in a moment. <laughs> Has ever can oil the industry? No, but if there's any subsidies towards the oil companies, they should remove that. I don't think they should be having to pay any more than anybody else just because they're in the oil business. Yeah, I think they should go maybe on a bracket of how much they make and how much profit they make and maybe divvy out some of their profit, profits a little bit. I think so. No, not necessarily. Absolutely. They, they get off way too easy. In this province, probably. Some thoughts from Albertans on whether Alberta oil companies, oil and gas companies should be forced to pay higher royalty rates. This, some might say, inflammatory ad to be released next Monday by betterwayalberta.ca. That's a campaign from labor and social service advocates says, yes, higher royalties and taxes. Frank, let's hear what you have to say. I know you've got a comment and I've got a question. Well, the point is that raising taxes is really something that will cripple any economy, and it'll cripple the Alberta economy the same as any other economy. But raising royalties is something we already tried under the Stelmac regime. And what it did was it just made capital flow east, west, and south, and it nearly destroyed the oil industry. You don't want to raise taxes. It reduces productivity. You don't want to raise royalties because there's other places where oil money can go. And so it's just a no-win game to raise uh, taxes and to raise royalties. But Frank, some might say our economy isn't about to spiral into recession like it was when Premier Stelmack yes. tried that. I agree, but if you look at the relative, uh, how we did when royalty rates went up relative to everybody else, so that we, everybody went down, what happened is we went down even farther if you look at the statistics. And so there's very clear evidence, yes, everybody went down, but Alberta went down way farther and it was all because of raising the royalty rates and capital just flew out. And if you raise royalty rates now, that's exactly what's going to happen. Capital is going to flow out and the oil industry is just going to start to sink and you're going to kill the golden goose. And that means jobs, Gil. As president of the Alberta Labour Federation, you represent 145,000 unionized Albertans. Aren't you worried that higher royalties and taxes, the ones you're pushing for, will drive away their employers? Well, first of all, let me respond to three points that uh, Frank has made. First, earlier he had mentioned that um, spending uh, spending is going up dramatically uh, during economic boom times, but the reality is that in that same period that Frank is talking about, our population grew by more than a million people, so on a per capita basis, we're actually spending about the same as we did before. Okay. So this it's a myth, frankly, that spending is spiraling uh, into the stratosphere. Second, second, on the subject of... I didn't uh, use those words. On, on, <laughs> second, on the, on the subject of taxes and royalties, let me start with taxes first. By the government's own admission, we could increase taxes in Alberta by $11 billion a year 
year and still be the lowest tax jurisdiction in the country. So, so why that, not? I, Political so, so hot what I, potato? So what I, ta I, see, I see room to move to pay for the public services that Alberta's, Albertans value and which actually make our economy stronger. The final point about royalties, let's be serious. I mean, to, to, to say that uh, that activity in the oil patch decreased because of uh, Stalmik's very modest proposals in terms of royalty increases is, is purely a fantasy. He is a victim is of... He's, no, listen, he's a victim... Frank, Frank, he's a victim of bad timing. He, he started out got sure, conversation we, right before a global we recession and the price of oil went from $140 a barrel to 40 That's why people stopped that. investing okay. and it wasn't just an Alberta problem. Okay, let's, let's it's, go ahead and jump yeah, in so here. Of course it wasn't just an Alberta <laughs> problem, but can't you understand that we went down more than everybody else? No, okay. you're, 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 what I saw during that recession is that oil companies continue to be profitable. They laid off people, they got subsidies from... No, no, no. Work did go away. We know work went away. To be fair, you do look at the land sales, and that's that's in one part of the big royalties is, is companies bidding on land sales. In Alberta, it went from $2.1 billion before the, the royalty change down to about $600 million in Saskatchewan. At the exact same time, during the recession, during our royalty change, they went from getting about $170 million a year to getting just under a billion. They went up in their land sales at the same time yeah, ours went okay. down. So, well, so well, they were investing yeah, money. The, the they still were no, investing money, The problem money, is though. when it comes to investment in the oil and gas industry, the main motivator is price. And what we saw with the Saskatchewan example is that as a result of an expansion of shale gas, there were new opportunities there. People moved there. The, when they the, went when back the price down for, after, though. When the price for oil and, and, and They invest, went back down after, after they fixed on. the royalties. Listen, as Here. long as the Gil, price is I need is to move high, on. Scott, let me ask you this. Alberta, Are you concerned, period. Scott, about the idea behind uh, betterwayalberta.ca? Are you concerned about complicating taxes more than they already are? We hear about government efforts to cut red tape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, the idea that they, they want to they wanna move back to a, a multi-tiered system for, for taxes versus our single rate that we have right now in, in this province, um, I mean, Right now, if federally, our, our tax code is almost 3,000 pages long. It started off at 11 pages long. Uh, I don't think a lot of people are clamoring to have more complexity and more confusion in their, in their taxes. And the reality is, uh, his goal there is, is to shift more of the taxes to, to wealthier people. But the reality is, right now in Alberta, the top 10% of wage earners pay 57% of all the taxes. Federally, where they have a, a multi-tiered system, the top 10% uh, wage earners pay 58% of the taxes. So in reality, changing to a system isn't going to make a very little change over Overall, to our revenue, very little change to yeah. who's okay. actually paying is the taxes, it but it will really you know, complicate is it our tax. Personal tax or I corporate tax you're I proposing to raise? Both, but I, I think that you know uh, people like Scott focus on this question of simplicity. But I think for most Albertans, uh, the mo more important thing is fairness. And what we've got is a flat tax system for high-income earners that has disproportionately uh, benefited people so who are making high. So, so there, if, if there's an Alberta tax advantage, it's a tax advantage only for the rich people earning middle incomes okay. in Alberta actually pay more in taxes than in other jurisdictions in more this country. In let me, uh, let me let, uh, taxes, uh, let, me let Frank taxes. jump in here on this one. Frank? Well, I don't see any, I, I think simplicity is a very good argument. I, I don't see any problem with the way that the system is running right now. What Gil is suggesting is that we want uh, some kind of a really progressive tax, and I don't see the point here in this, so that progressive tax would be, as your income goes up, not only do you pay more tax, you pay a higher rate. And that just discourages all kinds of incentives. What we really want to make an economy run well is we want to make taxes overall lower, right across the board. This would be really good for an economy. So if you're going to do that, then what you want to do is you also want to reduce spending. And a lot of people like me believe that the implied size of government from those kinds of changes will make an economy function better. You know, people you know, like me believe I, that if you yeah. let a government interfere in an economy too much, you're just stifling the economy, there, and it's you know, not going to run. Look that at the USSR. Just, it's a perfect example. Yeah, look, ta Frank says that there's nothing wrong with the existing tax system, but there is a, a huge problem because it, we're not bringing in enough revenue to pay for the quality of services that people want and expect. How and the result is, and the result, is, Frank, Frank listen, the only thing that your low tax structure has created is deficits. And no, no, so high spending is created. Just like it did Getty's. When you've got a revenue 
revenue service. system that doesn't sustain middle of the road services in a well, province of middle, 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 middle of the road services. Yeah, let me right. ask Scott this question. We're middle of the road compared to other You're Canadian right. provinces. Uh, we get middle of the road if results we don't pay for high spending. If we don't pay spending, we get middle of the road results for high spending. Health care, infrastructure, we can't run a functioning economy. You shouldn't be spending the most in Canada on health care yet get middling results. Now, we get good results on education. And where, where are we on our, our wait lists? Where are we on wait lists? We're very average in the country. If we're going to be third highest spending in the country or second okay, highest spending in the country on, here's something, on here's something that we Scott and I be here's, very, here's very something that Scott high. and I agree with. We're average. We're middle of the road in terms For of results. other provinces. But our For economy results. is 70% bigger on a per okay. capita basis. So why is it that the wealthiest province in the country can no longer afford to pay for middle of the road services? That's the question that Albertans should be asking. The cupboard okay. is bare. Our, our politicians keep saying the cupboard is bare, but it's because they've made it bare by, by giving, overspending. By giving away, by overspending, giving yeah. away, giving tax Frank, and final word to you away. tonight. Overspending. I, I agree with Scott. It, this is, of course a, this he is does. a spending problem, <laughs> not a revenue problem at the all. Numbers don't we really need to ramp down spending. You can find out more at betterwayalberta.ca. In the meantime, thank you, gentlemen, for your insights and opinions tonight. <laughs> Thank Good you. talking it's with you. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. Frank. Thanks, Alberta so. Federation of Labour President Gil McGowan, Scott Hennig, Alberta Director with the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, and Frank Atkins, Associate Professor of Economics at the University of Calgary.